Hello, this is Bishop Bones from school. We had a new computer suite about 18 months ago, um, which the children loved and they, and they still do. Uh, but then we bought some DigiBlue cameras and, and that opened up this massive whole field of, of the children actually making films rather than just being the adults. Uh, and they absolutely loved it. We do have a problem with um, communication and language skills of the children as they come into school. Um, boys are following a stereotype I know, but boys do love computers. And, and this whole project has, has opened up another area of the curriculum to them with poetry. It's, it's been absolutely tremendous. Are you any special dishes? We chose a poem, we chose Robert Louis Stevenson's The Land of Counterpane. Got them to read the poem together. We, we all read it through together as a class. Talked about what our understanding of that poem was. Um, and then we split people up into groups and they each had a verse to animate. They were really chuffed with it. They, they got such an immense pride, amount of pride in it. And I think, uh, I, think I've, I, I got it on camera there the first time they actually watched the poem. And, and they were really, you could see that from their faces, they were really chuffed with what they'd done and, and what they'd achieved. As in most schools, we are trying to achieve a class culture where boys are as enthusiastic writers as girls. Our class has tried to do this through poetry, and in the first instance to simply get boys to appreciate a wider genre of poetry. The poem we chose was The Land of Counterpane by Robert Louis Stevenson. The children's challenge was to make an animation using digital blue of a verse for this poem. We placed children into mixed ability groups and encouraged a lot of speaking and listening skills. Also, a lot of emphasis was placed on the importance of teamwork. And the unit of work was actually finished within one week. The Land of Counterpane by Robert Louis Stevenson by Class 9 When I was sick and lay abed, I had two pillows at my head and all my toys beside me lay to keep me happy all day. And sometimes for an hour or so I watch my leaden soldiers go with different uniforms and different drills among the bedclothes and through the hills. As well as Digital Blue, the children were given the opportunity to use a free program called Audacity to record and manipulate their narration. And all my toys beside me here to keep me happy all the day. Bedclothes and through the hills. I've set my ships and fleets all up among the streets. I brought my trees and houses up and planted cities all about. And sometimes sent my ships and fleets all up and down among the sheets. I brought my trees and houses up and planted cities all about. I was a giant, great and still, that sits upon the pillow hill. The seas before him, dale and plain, the pleasant land of counterpane. When I was sick and lay in bed, I had two pillows at my head, and all my toys beside me lay to keep me happy all day. 
It's about a boy, it's in his room, and he's um, ill, and he has to, he's thinking of different things that he could play with in his room. It was about a kid that was sick and lay in bed, and he, and he imagined that all of his toys came alive. Oh, nice, okay. And all of the covers were his heels. Yeah. Well, he was like, in, he, he was sick and he was in bed and he um, was, had all these toys beside him and he made cities and played with all these toys. Different. It's not like the poem like about the winter or something. It's just about somebody sick in bed playing with his toys. Depends what poems they are. I like really funny ones, but I don't like the, just the other ones. I didn't really like poetry. Poetry's OK. No, not really, because it's a bit like girly and you can, there's like too many ways you can do it and it's like you can make it rhyme or not and there's just too many different ways. I like comics and football magazines. It went better than I thought it was in the go, actually. Because yeah. Toby, Jordan and Jade done good with the train and that. Yeah. Me and Beth was making the scenery, uh, or the carpet and that, and then we made, then we made the, 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 the set and like all the trees and the sun and that. And just share each other's ideas. Well, the good thing about it is that I have more work than different people and I'm communicating with people I have, I don't really ever talk to them. My group has been doing the first verse and we've been making the um, plasticine characters and all the background at the moment. That was really, really fun. Okay. really enjoyed that. Because you could, like, actually see what was happening and you could picture it better. I think it's good fun and you enjoy it. I enjoy it. It was more, it was more fun than just writing about it. Okay. I like it more because we've done the land count and pay. Oh, it's right. a nice poem. What skills did you have to teach the children in, as regards animation? What happened at the start was they would be almost, when they first used it, it was almost overexcited and they just wanted to move the characters around as much as possible and they'd be jumping here, there and everywhere. But they almost like reassessed themselves and they, they thought, well, actually, I need to make this look more realistic. Uh, so they did very uh, smooth movements and then just did a few frames and things like that. And once I got them into that, they, they sort of rolled with it, really. They also talked a lot about it because you'd have two children using the computer, using the animation software, uh, and quite often one would be moving the characters while the other one clicked on the, on the frame. So they had to talk a lot to each other to make sure their hands were left in the shot. You could see they were making lots of eye contact and things like that. You, you know, they'd, would, they were actually listening to each other. So sorry, Stu, but you also <laughs> said that it was great that the children who often were taking a lesser role in the leadership we're actually now coming forward and we're yeah. And you know, regardless of whether they were a boy or a girl or, or an, an able child or a less able child, they, it was very inclusive and they got them all into it really. It went better than I thought it was in the go actually. Because yeah. Toby, Jordan and Jade done good with the train and that. Yeah. Me and Beth was making the scenery uh, or the carpet and that and then we made, then we made the, the the set and like all the trees and the sun and that. Do you think boys mm. are more into this kind of activity than girls? Um, initially I thought yes. I thought this is going to be something that's going to capture the boys, it's really going to enliven their poetry aspects. I think watching them make the film, it was possibly the girls that came to the fore. I think that they were able to show to the boys, look, we're as capable as you are at doing this mm. uh, and actually we've got some fantastic ideas. And the boys then took on the girls' ideas, and it, it really helped their collaboration. Yeah. It was a, a really, deal. truly collaborative thing, in terms of boys and girls, but also uh, mixed ability groups. They didn't really like poetry. Poetry's OK. No, not really, because it's a bit like girly, and you can, there's like too many ways you can do it, and it's like you can make it rhyme or not, and there's just too many different ways. Listening to the responses from the children was fascinating because they were able to take an abstract concept, which is what they were finding confusing. Um, they mentioned that it was a too, too big a thing for them to encompass the idea of rhyme and lines, the number of words you need in a line, whereas this way they could channel it down um, and they could have it 
instead of this abstract, amorphous thing, it became much more controllable. Um, and by seeing the visualisation of it, it made that image in your head onto something concrete that they could work with. I think we start at the wrong end as adults. That's our problem. <laughs> and we need to go all the way back to where the children are and go from the very beginning. So we're trying to get all that excitement going, that enthusiasm. And we're trying to sometimes go too fast and start deconstructing everything for them. And sometimes children need to just be immersed, they need to be dropped into it and immersed into it to start to feel it. And then we can help them take it all apart. And I think that the, the video, the green screening, the Digi Blues, it, it allows them that, that time to, to see it as a whole and then start to take it apart mm. and help to make sense of it. Mm. Um, and because it's all recorded, it's not forgotten. We can, we can always go back and look again. It's about a boy, it's in his room, and he's um, ill, and he has to, he's thinking of different things that he could play with in his room. It was about a kid that was sick and lay in bed, and he, and he imagined that all of his toys came alive. Oh, nice, okay. And all of the covers were his heels. Some of the more interesting bits have actually been the bits where we've filmed the children filming. Yeah. It's not, mm. not just the final product the children have made, but actually our understanding and assessment of how much have they done towards that production. And so the who's watching me, watching you, watching me mm. thing has is, is been really, really interesting. Mm. Um, and, and I think the children have been able to reflect on that as well. Mm. Yeah, it's been really good. Mm. Stuart, you doing the watching. Yeah. What, did, what did you learn? It was quite difficult for me at first because I was there filming and I wanted to sort of like step in and say, oh, why don't you do this? But I couldn't because I was actually holding the camera. Um, but it made me re be really objective and I just sort of stood back and filmed them and, and watched the interaction. Um, and it made me think, well, perhaps sometimes I step in a little bit too early as a teacher or maybe I should just leave them, leave them to it for just that little bit longer until they, you know, see what they come up with. So what piece of advice would you give someone wanting to take on a bit of research project like this? Uh, give it a go. <laughs> just, just, just do it. Yeah, we're basically, yeah. yeah just, absolutely. Just, You've got to start go. somewhere. I sort of sat uh, in front of the, or to the side of the camera here, so that the children were looking at me here, not looking straight okay. at the camera. Um, and we had the sort of natural source of light coming in from the side of them. What's really nice and works well is that you don't have direct sunlight uh -huh. coming through the window, which is great because it gives it, it gives it that really flattering soft light. With light on one side of the face, it can be sometimes very contrasted. The shadowed side of the face can get a bit too dark. All right, yeah. And what we can do is we can actually use what's called a reflector, which Matilda's gonna demonstrate for us with this piece of white card. And as she pushes it in the event space, we can see the shadows get lighter. Mm -hmm. And then as she moves the card away from the event space, we can see that his shadows get much darker. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a really simple way of giving us a lot of control over how that light looks. Fantastic, that's yeah, cool, isn't it? 